Hi folks, Wes Olszewski here, author of this book, which is stories of vessels that wrecked on the Great Lakes on the date of November 10th. Now we know that the Edmund Fitzgerald wrecked on that date, and it's mentioned in this book. However, not all of the wrecks that wrecked on November 10th are in there. As a matter of fact, there are about 40, so you can't fit them all in just one book. But I am going to give you a video today about one wreck that isn't in this book. It's the wreck of the Water Witch. Around the waterfront saloons and cramped galleys of assorted wooden vessels, a yarn was told by cooks and deckhands. It goes like this. On a hazy summer evening out on the calm expanse of Lake Huron Saginaw Bay, a white steamer with a red smokestack would appear in the distance. She was a propeller, but had a walking beam that acted athwartwise. Those who saw her were puzzled because only side wheel steamers used walking beams. As the observer took a moment to wipe his eyes and look back again, she had vanished. Indeed, there was a ghost ship on Saginaw Bay. Others would chime in, claiming that they too had seen the specter, and soon the tale would earn an aroma of truth. It was a good pastime for everyone, except for Captain Redmond Ryder. Our story begins in the spring of 1863, with the steam propeller Water Witch working her second season on the Great Lakes. She is on the Chicago to Sarnia route with stops in between under a contract to the Grand Trunk Railroad. Her captain is George Ryder, who took over command at the beginning of the season, and by doing so, one upped his brother, famed Captain Redmond Ryder. Although Redmond was the skipper of a brand new steamer, the Meteor, George's boat, the Water Witch, was a good deal faster than the Meteor. So Redmond had the new boat, and George had the faster boat. In sibling rivalry, that was pretty much a tie. The Great Lakes would see to it, however, that both brothers would be dealt an equal disaster. Water Witch was unique and an extremely short-lived experiment. Captain J.L. Wolverton applied a concept of a new way to use a walking beam steam engine. Normally, the walking beam engine uses a single steam cylinder, and it makes its up-and-down motion, which is transferred across the walking beam, down a connecting rod, and then is used to turn a crankshaft which then drives a huge paddle wheel. In what was called the beam board propeller, that engine is turned sideways, or what is called a thwartwise. Now instead of turning a huge paddle wheel, it could turn a propeller. Of course, that configuration would cause the propeller to turn too slowly to drive a steamboat. So a series of complex gears and cogs was used to speed up that motion. It was a radical design that was first placed into the steam propeller Water Witch when she was launched at Newport, Michigan, which is today known as Marine City. That launching took place in the spring of 1862. Right alongside her was constructed the B.F. Wade, and she was also equipped with the beamboard steam engine. These two steamers were the only beamboard vessels ever to sail the Great Lakes. One feature of the Water Witch was that she was boasted as having a watertight bulkhead. The planking of this bulkhead was inlaid with what was called Indian rubber to ensure that it would not allow seepage. It was said 
that even if her entire bow were torn away in a collision, the water witch could still safely sail to her destination. This apparently came in handy on Saturday, June 7, 1862. The water witch was steaming in southwestern Lake Superior when her complex engine workings simply came apart. The damage to her stern was so great that it left her in a sinking condition. Only the buoyancy of her forward section, as well as the fact that her donkey boiler was installed there, saved the boat from sinking. The donkey boiler provided steam to the pumps that managed to keep her barely afloat. There were no tugboats anywhere nearby, so 75 oarsmen from La Pointe Harbor were used to tow the steamboat there, where she waited for repairs. Just 17 months later, the Water Witch was doing battle with a Lake Huron gale and was somewhere near the mouth of Saginaw Bay. It was there that Captain Ackerman and the crew of the schooner G.D. Norris sighted her. The steamer smokestack had tumbled down, and she was listing and at the mercy of the waves. Some of the schooner's crew climbed their boat's rigging to get a better look. By the time they got to the top, the water witch had vanished. The date was November 10, 1863. Captain Reverend Ryder had brought the steamer Meteor down from Bruce Mines in Canada when he got the news that his brother's boat was missing. He headed out onto Lake Huron and searched until early December, yet found nothing but waves and blowing snow. Soon thereafter, the rumors began of the ghost ship Water Witch on Lake Huron. Her lines, it was said, were unmistakable. She was one of a kind. Anyone could see her through the haze. Of course, the tellers of the ghost ship tales left out one important detail. Her sister ship, the B.F. Wade, was an exact twin and sailed the same routes. Yet those stories haunted Captain Redmond Ryder every time he commanded a steamship near where his brother had been lost. That is until December 4th, 1873. Just one decade and two dozen days after the loss of the Water Witch and Captain George Ryder, his brother, Redmond Ryder, would go down in a late-season gale with his command, the propeller, City of Detroit. The boat foundered in nearly the same location as the Water Witch. Rumors of a ghost ship then ceased. <laughs>